Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. It's me, Mrs. Reed Wright. I want to welcome you back to the art room. We've been doing an exciting project this week, making a scarecrow. And I wanted you to know that in the art room, we are talking about art and looking at art and creating art and talking about famous artists. And this week, we talked a little bit about Grant Wood. And Grant Wood was an artist in Iowa. He's no longer living, but when he was living, he did paintings of rural America. And rural is like countryside, where you would see barns and old houses and fields of things that were getting ready for harvest. And we are in the harvest season and talking about feasts and leading up to Thanksgiving. Now we know that most of the food is grown in California, right here in our valley, and we have to keep the crops safe from the crows. So we make scarecrows, and we're making a paper scarecrow that you could maybe put in your window. Now, yesterday we talked about that a face tells a story. And there was a picture of me next to a scarecrow and I was whispering into his ear a little secret that I would vote for him because his face was so funny to me. And we're going to be making our face today. And what we'll do is first look at the scarecrow faces that were lined up at the Scarecrow Festival. I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the faces and how they are made. This one is made out of burlap which is the same as my little scarecrow that I have hanging on the easel. The next one is made out of a nylon stocking stuffed with cotton, and then they put makeup on it to make her cheeks rosy. And then this one is out of a pillowcase. And we're going to make our face out of a brown paper bag. And since we're doing a two-dimensional art, which means it's flat, it's not stuffed, I'm not stuffing mine. I don't know how you'll stuff yours if you'd like to stuff your paper scarecrow. But we're going to put a face on, and I'm going to teach you something really important to learn. When you're drawing, the eyebrows are really what determines or makes the expression. If the eyebrows are pointed down, you'll see, I'll try it out on my scarecrow and say, do I want a mad scarecrow? Do I want a happy scarecrow? So I'll show you. And then the mouth is the other part that really tells the story. So I'm going to show you like we did with Matisse. I'm going to arrange the pieces and rearrange. I might put a little dot of glue stick and put it and show you and say, does this look how I want it? Because I don't need to ask anyone else. My face belongs to me because it's my artwork. And remember what I told you, if people try to put their hands on your artwork, you say to them, oh, I have an extra piece of brown paper that you can make one right next to me. Because when you're working on your art, no one else's hands should go on it unless it's collaborative art. Sometimes we used to have teachers would have the children line up around the table and you'd get a pot of paint. Maybe I'd have red and I'd paint here and they'd ding the bell and you move to another part of the paper and you paint where a friend was just standing and add to their painting. Then you may paint on someone else's work when it's planned and everyone says okay. All right, so let me get my brown piece of paper and I'm going to begin to cut it out. You can see I just took a panel off of the brown bag. Here's where you know you reach in and get the bag and here it is and it's pretty big. Now here's something you need to know. When you were putting parts together, you wouldn't want a gigantic head on a little body. So when I have my shirt, oh, here it is. Let me show you. When I saw you yesterday, I hadn't put the buttons on yet or the patches, because remember we said it was ragged and torn. I have two more patches, and I wanted to show you how I did it. Let me use my clipboard for my background here. 
Well, I'll have to sit this way so I don't bump into anything. I don't think I need this stick on my lap, do I? All right. So I have two little patches. Let me get this glue stick and put glue on the back. And one patch I'll put up here. It's not a pocket. It's just a patch. And I'll put another patch. You notice I picked red, my favorite color. You can pick whatever color you'd like. Or if you want to put patches at all. There my patches are. And now I like to make it look like it's been sewn on by using a marker and put the stitches. Touch the patch and out to the shirt. Touch the patch and out to the shirt. Out, 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 out. So it looks like it's been hand stitched. Maybe there was a little hole there. Maybe a crow came by and gave him a little peck there. Stitch out, stitch out. There. I'm going to set the shirt down, put the lid back on my pen so that we can see how big his head needs to be. Snap. Now, I'm going to hold my, oh, way too big of a piece of paper. Well, if his shoulders are there, I will use my marker and say his neck will go here. I put it right next to the, between the shoulders and the neck and put it there so I'll see how far to go. This is going to be just the right size. You can draw yours. I'm not a person who draws before cutting. I just start the cut. Cut, go around, keep in mind where those marks were. And I'm still cutting around and going down and putting the long neck. But I can hide that long neck inside the shirt. Let's see how it looks. Is it the right size? Maybe a little thinner. OK, I'm going to pinch it here and say to myself, fold it so both sides of the head are the same way. Cut off that big lump of a head on that side and cut his neck a little skinnier. Because I'm arranging and rearranging, just like we did with Matisse. It doesn't look good like this. Well, maybe not. Maybe I need to add something else. How does it look now? Oh, that looks much better. I'm not going to glue it onto his shirt, but I'm going to put the face on. And you know I talked about the eyebrows. So let me get my bag of brown and blacks. And I'm going to cut out two eyebrows and show you how the expression is done. Let's move this out of the way and have this clipboard ready for a place where I can press against. Put his head on here. Now, since we have two eyebrows, I'm folding my paper in half. If you don't have paper to glue on, you know what you can do. Just draw it. Remember, it's a curved line. So I'm going to cut my curved line eyebrows and put them like this. I'm going to put a little glue on each one of them so I can arrange it and pick it up quickly and rearrange it. Oh, did it stick? It did. How funny. I'm going to put his eyebrow there. Do I like it to look friendly like this? Well, that's the friendly way to do the eyebrows. This is the mad way to do the eyebrows. A little more glue. Do I want him to be mad? Stay there. Don't stick to my fingers, piece of paper. See how it makes the eyebrows go down? Let me put the eyes so we can see if it looks good that way. Come on, you piece of brown. A different color brown. I'll use the dark brown for his eyes. Remember, we have two eyes, so I'm going to fold the paper in half again and do two round circles. What I like to do is measure around. I just put my thumb in the middle, and I just go around my thumb when I cut to say, does that fit right? I like to glue it on a piece of white paper first, because I think it makes it look like a real eyeball. 
I might have to look and see in my bag. Did I separate the white out so I can find my white? If I can't, I'll just use this old piece of shirt. I can use the back of it. So how you do it, you glue the colored part of the eye and put it on your white paper. Make sure it sticks. And glue the colored part of your eye and put it on your white paper. Make sure it sticks. Then when you cut, you cut around it so you see how much white to show. I like my eyes to be more color and less white because he doesn't look as surprised. Oh, I better hurry up and move those eyebrows if I don't want him to be mad because you know the glue stick will stick and he'll have mad eyebrows for the rest of the time. I think I want him to be surprised. Let me glue his eyes on his face because my face needs to tell a story. So I'm going to put one eye. Oh, his eyes are big and surprised like the one that I was telling the secret to. So get the other eyeball on there. Put it on. And I need to move his eyebrows so that they're more surprised. And how you make them surprised is when they're on the outside, up and raised up high. Woohoo! Surprised eyebrows are up high and curved right above the eye. I'm going to put a big open mouth, I think. And I like to put cheeks on mine because then it makes them look rosy like they've been out in the sun and maybe at the beach. I'll use this light pink because the dark pink looks like he's a little embarrassed. Cut out his circle. If I don't get a chance to finish his face or if you don't get a chance to finish your face, just bring it back so that on Friday we can add it to our scarecrow. Don't you worry because you know art can sometimes take two days, three days, four days. Here's my cheeky cheek guy. Here's his cheeks. Now I'm going to put a big smile on him and how I'm doing it is using that shirt paper and I'm just making a half circle. I'm going to have him being ha -ha, surprised and happy. A little more glue on here. And then we'll have just enough time to sing our goodbye song and tell you what to bring tomorrow. Because you'll want to bring some paper for a pair of gloves and hands. And maybe if you have yellow paper to make some straw, bring it too. I hope this is the right way. Oh. I think it looks terrific. I make me the, might make the mouth a little smaller. I'm going to take it off so it doesn't dry like that. All right, boys and girls. Thank you so much for coming. Let's sing goodbye to one another. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Remember, keep your pieces safe because you are going to be putting them all together on Friday. We have the shirt and the pants and the hat and the face done. See you tomorrow, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.